Right, um, this is a bit off the cuff, and I don't pretend to be an expert on uh, geopolitical uh, situations or military manoeuvres, but as a Christian, uh, JC and I both thought that as it's a Christian topic in a Christian country, i.e. the Ukraine, that just a short video um, potentially going over a Christian perspective on what's going on would be beneficial. So I tend not to rely on mainstream media for hopefully obvious reasons by now. Just their neglect of covering any Christian persecution of any description is enough for me to realise that they have an agenda that is not based in the Bible, certainly. Um, I, I feel like whatever side of the political divide you may be on, whether you're left, right, centrist, um, you know, pro-Russia, pro-Ukraine, pro-democracy, pro-anti-war, um, what's evident is that Ukraine is a majority Christian country. Orthodoxy is the preferred version of Christianity there. Also, on paper, Russia is, uh, is also orthodox. Um, although, I must admit that even propaganda withstanding, um, the sight of Chechen troops uh, doing, um, I think, namaz or like, you know, Islamist prayers on Ukrainian soil is, is designed to incite some uh, counter feeling or some solidarity amongst Christians. I feel that at the moment, the potential use of thermobaric weapons, uh, like weapons of, I won't say mass destruction, but arbitrary um, genocide is a, is a step too far. I don't believe that the nuclear option is going to be taken because I don't believe that the irrationality shown by the Russian government at this time uh, warrants that fear, as it were. And again, I'm no political expert, just political science, a little bit of it. Um, but let's put it this way. Uh, a Western country, a European country, NATO membership aside, um, because I believe that's at the crux of this dispute, a country that's given up its nuclear weapons in return for a small piece of paper from Russia saying uh, we definitely won't invade. Like, I don't know if they put the wink emoji at the end, but I, don't, I suppose they're scrambling to find that piece of paper at the moment in the, in the debris of the civilian um, landmarks that have been hit as well as uh, the strategic military uh, like sites that have been targeted. I think it's a potentially can be played out as a David and Goliath type moment in global history although to be fair as far as I'm aware there's been zero days of global peace since the end of the Second World War. That doesn't mean we need a rematch. Uh, it's been observed that social media is in play for, for the first time. I don't accept that in as much as uh, the Iraq war, etc. Like more recent conflicts have had the benefit of people being able to communicate. Although I do feel that the images that the Ukrainians are managing to send out are helpful against the Russian propaganda. I'd also like to just pause for a moment and consider that whether you're right or left, I, I feel like you'll see the reality of this, that Russia was cited over and over and over again in America as... Um, you know, the reason for Trump this, Trump that, Trump the other. And yet none of this happened under his watch. I'm not necessarily pro-Trump, I'm pro-comedy. Uh, however, yeah, you, you can't win in certain situations because either they are, you know, they, even with North Korea, Trump managed to uh, step foot on, 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 on that land and make an offer. You can't be seen, you can't negotiate without being able to open like a genuine channels of communication, whether you believe someone to be a dictator or not. And the language that my prime minister has used regarding Putin lately has been pretty forthright. The UK have been the first of the Western nations to send military aid. Again, whether you agree with war or not, do you agree with uh, potentially, well, definitely innocent children um, going to bed terrified? Uh, living in fear of weapons that they can't begin to comprehend, but the, the end result is the same. Whether it's death by having the oxygen sucked out of you, or by, um, you know, friendly fire. Like, it doesn't really matter. Death is final. And because of that, and because of the um, implications for the, West, for the rest of Europe and for the global financial situation, etc., we should be considering our mortality. As Christians, we've obviously already done that, hopefully. If you're a cultural Christian and yet you're still watching this, 
like have a little look uh, hit me up in the comments any questions that have troubled you um, if I can't answer them I, I, I know a man who can I'm talking Jesus but also I know other Christian apologists as you could imagine who will be able to make a case or to, to you know argue uh, or explain any things that are keeping you from fully committing yourself back to Jesus where you belong quite frankly so I think that's about all I've got to say um, I don't believe there's much point in um, you know posturing I think if, if the world wants to assist Volodymyr, the president of the Ukraine, then they should just do it. Um, to stand by and watch a sovereign country for, for all of the, their faults and for their innocence and for their guilt. And for, you know, it's, there are means politically of solving disputes and, you know, trying, to, if not to make everybody happy, everybody less miserable uh, in these circumstances that do not require, um, like, a bombardment and assault and the murder of innocent Ukrainians or Russians because there are obviously ethnically Russian people living there and another thing please do pray all you know for everybody involved in the conflict but don't forget Russian people in Russia who are also anti their government's uh, stance who may not even be able to speak out about it although a lot of them uh, thankfully have so that's all I have to say about that keep them all in your prayers please because it's, it's a really serious time. And if you look to Revelation, there are certain things happening that are indicative of, um, I mean, the coming glory, but <laughs> current tribulation, as it were. So keep your chin up, keep it real, keep it Jesus. But if you don't pray, could you please start? What's the harm? If you do pray, put it on a piece of paper. I know it's difficult when you have like a whole list of things and I'm not saying forsake Nigerian Christians or Pakistani Christians or North Korean Christians, but Ukrainian Christians are being persecuted right now, um, as are Russian Christians um, within this conflict. So even though they're not included in the uh, top 50 list as it were, doesn't mean by any means that they're not suffering. And when one of us suffers, we all suffer. So please do uh, consider keeping them in your prayers regularly um, because the creator of the universe surely is uh, the, the only one for the job, as it were, to sort all this out. So God bless you and keep you, and um, subscribe to SoCo. Uh, I'd like to thank JC on camera for all his hard work, and uh, press the like button, and uh, do the little bell thing, and uh, maybe do a little dance, I don't really know, say answer a lot, and uh, like, you know, carry on loving each other as I know you've been commanded to, but do it for fun as well. All right, I'll chat to you soon. God bless. Bye-bye.